What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing kind of a special review. This will be my first revolver review. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about the Taurus 608 357 Magnum. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about is why I got this pistol. You'll be hearing some of this uh, information over if you watch the unboxing video, but I'll go over it real quick. Uh, first thing, we'll go from muzzle to back here. Uh, the high-vis front sight, this orange front sight, I really like. Matched up with the adjustable rear, very Glock S sight. I like that a lot. Uh, I like the uh, ported uh, the ported barrel that comes with it, uh, stock, which is really nice when you're shooting 357 Magnums. You can rifle those babies out pretty quick. Uh, another awesome feature of it, as you can see, the 608 is the uh, six inch 357 Magnum that fires eight shots. It's got an eight round cylinder. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to find speed loaders for it, but as you can see. Uh, this company called Star Firearms makes them, and it works just fine. So that gives you eight rounds as opposed to six, which is nice in my opinion. Uh, it's also got this Hogue overmolded grip, which I like a lot. And it's got a uh, pretty nice single action trigger pull with a long, very wide blade on the trigger, which I like a lot too. It's comfortable on my finger. Uh, the single action is very nice. However, the double action could use a little work, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, some of the other things I have with it are this holster that I got off eBay. It's from uh, Barsoni Leather. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Beaverton, Oregon. Uh, this is a really nice holster. I know on the listing it said this holster was made for this uh, handgun, but I don't believe it was. I think this is more of kind of a universal six inch uh, revolver holster, which is fine by me. So as I said before, I wanted a competition style 357. I wanted it to have eight shots. I wanted it to have a long sight radius and I wanted it to be ported. So between this and the uh, uh, Smith & Wesson 686, I went with this because of the price. Again, it was about 400 bucks cheaper. This was around 550 to $600. The Smith & Wesson was around 1,000. Now, a little side note right off the bat, this is my first revolver I've ever reviewed, so I'm probably gonna forget a few things. So the first thing I usually talk about is reliability, but I think I'm gonna save that for last because uh, a few surprises in store in that category. But the first thing I wanna talk about is price. Uh, the price for this is great. It's about half the uh, competition, but if you're paying half the competition, you have to wonder what they sacrifice. Well, you do get a little less quality and you don't get the durability or track record that you would be used to with a Smith & Wesson revolver, in my opinion. Uh, Taurus has always been famous for making budget-minded firearms. However, they do cut a few corners here or there. I don't know if you've ever heard the term stacking tolerances. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is accuracy. The accuracy on this revolver was pretty fantastic. Uh, if you do your part, you could shoot a... a easy a six inch group at 100 yards with this revolver. It was very impressive uh, when we bench shot it uh, a little bit, which I didn't film, but we got really, really impressive accuracy. A lot of that's due to, again, the long, pretty awesome adjustable sights and the pretty amazing single action trigger. Uh, as I always say, trigger and sights make accuracy, and for this revolver, it holds true. Some of the accessories that I got, uh, you're looking at them. The uh, one speed loader, and I got the holster so I could draw it all Rick Grimes style. And uh, that was pretty exciting. I'll be using this holster for future revolvers as well. And uh, basically just bought a ton of ammo. I shot a American Eagle and Winchester 357, and I think I got some Remington regular 38 Special, and I got some Remington Plus P38s as well, and uh, fired them all through here. I think all in total we fired about 400 rounds maybe 500 rounds. As you can see throughout the course of testing, it got very dirty. Uh, I've shot over 100 rounds through it since the last time I cleaned it. And as you, I know a lot of people will bitch about that, but it's my gun, so what do you want to do? Sometimes I like to shoot guns dirty just to see if they're capable of doing it. Uh, what this I do is probably different than some of the stuff you guys do when you shoot because you're gonna care for this gun, you're gonna keep it, you know, maybe the rest of your life. I usually buy guns just to review them and a lot of times they go down the river whether I like them or not. And I, since I'm showing people what the guns are capable of, I need to find out what the guns are capable of. As far as ergonomics go, the revolver is pretty great. 
Uh, I would say it's a little bit unbalanced. If you pick up a 686, it feels a little more balanced. This one's a little more uh, front heavy towards the barrel, and that's okay, I guess. If you're shooting a lot of uh, heavy 357 Magnum, uh, you won't notice it quite as much. The grip is very ergonomic. The feel of the revolver is really nice, even for a bigger revolver. It feels really good in your hand. Uh, it's easy to reload as well, and as far as the single action trigger, it's great. The double action trigger kind of sucks. Now as far as reliability goes, we had a lot of problems. Honestly, it almost made it not fun to shoot. Uh, we used the 38 and the 357, and I would have to say no matter what type of ammo or no matter how dirty or how clean the revolver was, it failed about once every eight shots and it stayed pretty consistent, you know, one to two to three failures per cylinder throughout the entire time we tested it. My friends who also shot this revolver had problems as well. So it wasn't just me. And in my research, I found that it was a pretty common issue with this type of firearm from this specific manufacturer. The Taurus 608 in particular has several YouTube videos online, and in lots of forums you will find that they have the same or very similar problems that I had in the video footage that I'm showing right now. Uh, the cylinder lock time was too short, resulting in locking lug coming back before the cylinder had rotated, causing it to lock on the same chamber was one theory. Another theory that was lead was built up under the ejector star, however, I'm not sure if that holds true here. Uh, the cylinder had too much play and it would bind up. Well, yeah, it, this cylinder has a lot more play than the Smith & Wessons that I'm used to using, so that could be an issue as well. Another issue that it could be is the forcing cone issue where the tolerance between the forcing cone and this cylinder is too tight and when shooting it's caused a and when shooting it, it causes it to bind up inside the gun as it heats up. Uh, that could be as well. And uh, basically what I did to fix it every time was either I just ejected all the rounds and reloaded them, or what I would do is I would manually cycle the cylinder. A lot of times it would get caught and I would just cycle it to the next round and uh, it would let go of whatever locked up in there and it would fire just fine. But it was a huge pain in the ass. And as I said again, it made it kind of difficult and kind of... Uh, kind of a chore to actually shoot, which, you know, you don't want it to be a chore to shoot, you want shooting to be fun and enjoyable. After reliability, I'm going to go with track record, and again, track record on Taurus is pretty spotty. Now, I'm not going to say that just on the internet, but I've owned lots of Tauruses. I've had the G2, I've had two PT-1911s, I've had this, I've had a couple other uh, pistols along the way as well, and I have to say about half of them work and about half of them don't. And if you're going to risk it and buy a you know, let's say a gun that's a third, you know, three quarters to half of the price of the competition, you're going to risk getting a gun like this and, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. On this revolver, I lost. And a lot of people are going to say, you should talk to the factory, they'll make it right. You know, every time I put a gun on the table that doesn't work correctly, they're always like, you should bring it to the factory and they'll make it right. I hate to tell you this, but in my opinion, they should have made it right to begin with. I'm just a normal guy, you know, and if I find a gun that doesn't work, I want to let you guys know about it. And I got to say, if it were me personally, as far as track record and reliability, I would stay far away from this revolver. Now, you can see good reviews on YouTube of this gun, but how many rounds did they put through it? How experienced are they? You know, I'm not saying I'm the most experienced guy in the world, but I can tell you when a gun works or when it doesn't work. Uh, as a reviewer and as a guy who owns lots of firearms, I'm not interested in a gun that doesn't work when I get it. You know, and I've said that before on the channel, but I get a lot of comments talking about how I can just give the manufacturer a second chance. The manufacturer shouldn't need a second chance. I've, I've had lots of pistols. Uh, again, this is on the table, for example, uh, the Walther. The Walther PPQ here. You know how many chances the Walther PPQ needed to impress me? One. Just one. It worked from the factory, it does everything that it's supposed to do for the price point that it sits at. And that's what I expect from manufacturers. Uh, if you're going to put out a firearm at $300, well that's great, but it should work. You know, it doesn't have to be the most accurate, it doesn't have to be the, the coolest looking, it doesn't have to have a great finish, but it should work. I expect 100% reliability from every firearm that I pick up. And why is that? 
Well, because reliability is the one thing you should expect. If you buy a cheap car, do you expect it to drive? I mean, you don't expect it to look good. You may not expect it to have good tires on it, but you expect it to run. And if it doesn't run, what is the purpose of the car? There is none. If the gun doesn't run, what's the purpose of the gun? There is none. You know, I don't care how accurate it is if I'm using it for self-defense, because guns are used for self-defense. This could be used to save somebody's life. And if it doesn't work, that person's life could be over. And who's responsible for that? Taurus says they put out guns that work. The guy uses it to defend his life and it doesn't work. Taurus is responsible because they make a poor product and it's the result of their poor manufacturing and they're cutting corners to try to lower the costs to sell more products. It's that manufacturing process that creates guns like this that don't work when you get them out of the box. And I just cannot stand that, okay? Now, what do I expect from a gun? I don't, I don't expect great looks, that comes with price. I don't expect great sights, I don't expect porting. You know, I don't expect a hogue over molded grip. These are all accessories to a gun that should already work correctly. And what Taurus does is they cut corners with reliability to put out a product that's cheaper to sell more. They want to sell more items, they want to get more of these guns on the market to make more money, and in the process they make a poor product. And I don't expect a gun to have all of these features, I just expect it to work. So at the base price, at a gun this price, maybe it shouldn't have all of these features and maybe they should have invested their time and money into making a firearm that actually works correctly. Because I would rather have a firearm that works correctly, that's ugly as sin and is only accurate to 30 yards, than a gun that shoots one every eight times and is accurate at 100 yards. What's the point of that? You know, most guns, most handguns at least, that are used used in self-defense are used within a radius of 10 yards. So all these, all these accessories, all this bling doesn't mean anything if the gun doesn't work. So all in all, I'm not trying to get down on Taurus, but I have to say I'm extremely disappointed with this firearm and I would not recommend you get this. I'm not even going to give you a number scale because it might be a zero. <laughs> Honestly, I was very upset with how this gun performed. And again, it may be just me. It may be something I'm doing wrong. That's entirely possible. I don't think it is, and I've done lots of research, and I've asked some uh, fairly expert people of their opinion of what's going on. I gave you some of the theories that I could have found out and could have not found out. I'm sure that I will hear from Taurus after this video, and if it's something incredibly stupid that I'm doing, well, then maybe I will do a second video, but I'm going to assume that this is Taurus's fault, and I am probably not going to do an update video. I'm probably just going to get this gun fixed, so the person that buys it after me will not have this problem, and I'll probably take the loss as far as the money goes, and then I'll probably sell it on down the road. So this has been my review of the Taurus 608 uh, 357 Magnum. Uh, it looks awesome. When it works, it performs awesome, but the problem is, is it doesn't work all the time, and I will not own a gun that doesn't work all the time. That's just what I expect from my firearms. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have a different opinion, please leave it in the comment section below. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. Check you later.